So the backing plates on these hydro boosts, all you have to do is take the C-clip off, make out a nut. Um, I, in order to get this one and seven eighths inch wrench on those nuts, um, you have to re remove one of these, uh, one of the studs. I was a goofball and did all four before I realized, hey, uh, why don't you only do one? So this is the one I, I need to replace or put on this uh, 04 2500 uh, Hydro Boost. Um, I'm going to cut this, thread it, and then... Thread it for this uh, 3 8 I think it's 3 8 16. If I remember right. Yeah. Um, and then, so thread that side. And then cut this off of the original uh, Tahoe vacuum booster and I'll see I think this is a little smaller um, I'll see if I can thread it but if not uh, I'll just put it on and then weld it and then if I ever need to replace the booster I'll just um, you know buy a new 04 hydro boost and cut the end and thread, have to thread it and then put the uh, the original Tahoe end on. Should work fine. The measurement from the mounting point to the center of the eyelet is seven and three eighths. All right. Um, Came out here to the shop. I was messing with it a little bit yesterday. On this Hydro Boost, originally I was planning on trying to thread this, but as you can see, there's not a lot of room. This thing is not removable. Uh, the earlier model ones, you could pop them out and there was a little like rubber clip that you would replace, grommet thing, to snap it back in. This one has to actually come out through the whole body. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is drill this out a little bit, about a quarter inch, put that in there, and then I'm going to probably try and TIG weld it and booger it up. Um, I'm going to use rags with some fresh water to try and keep this cool while I weld it because... You know, I think there's seals and stuff in here that we don't want to overheat. Um, and then I'm going to thread the other end of the rod so that it'll be reusable from the original master cylinder. And I had never used the, uh, I've used taps before, but never dies. That's what, um, and I kind of underestimated how hard it would be to get it started. Because I did try clamping that in my vise. But uh, for one, this is exactly 3 8 um, And kind of what I was reading on the internet said in order to take some round stock and thread it, there's actually a measurement slightly below um, whatever, you know, your rod would be. Half inch, 3 8 quarter. Uh, it'd actually be slightly below and you use a die on it. Um, and I looked on, a, well, I did a search and came up with a YouTube vid of a guy that used his drill press. And basically what you would do is cut this like in half and drill out for whatever diameter. So for three eighths, you'd be slightly below that. So you could clamp it in and get it straight and then clamp this and then use the head of that 
sorry, right here, to actually push on top and uh, keep it straight and keep a little pressure on it. Uh, what I did was, with this mill, um, I just chucked it up in an R8, um, in the R8 uh, 3 8 inch collet and kept it straight and since that had a flat spot on it I just clamped it in, in this uh, Kirk vise and then um, I threw this washer on top to keep the die from messing up the bottom of the collet and then I would just press down on it like this and uh, put some pressure while I rotated the uh, the die in there um, and that worked real good uh, these are just cheap Harbor Freight dies and um, you know a set of tool steel or um, a better steel might cut a little better but uh, from what I read this would be adequate enough for hand um, hand threading so I'm going to finish threading this. I'm going to thread about an inch of it. And then uh, we'll go to trying to drill out the, that and try and weld it onto the, um, the master. Well, I was afraid of that. I could feel this crap kind of given. Um, I think when I, worst case, what I'm going to do... Uh, I'll just take and put a pipe wrench on this thing. I'll break this one off. Or, uh, yeah, I'll either try and break that off or I'll just put the pipe wrench on. Um, might try and find another one of my other uh, tap and die sets, but anyway, we'll get it done. If I have to, it's really threaded enough to, uh, I can make this thing work, but I really need. Preferably another half inch. Something to think about on this rod. I got it thinking. Um, just depending on how your brake switch works. This one has this slot it sits in. And then, so I make sure to back that nut off so that it can fit all the way in to uh, activate the brake and all that. And not interfere with the switch, which right there is the uh, bare minimum. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot. We're just clamping this um, threaded collar, whatever you want to call it. Um, I set my max depth on this 3 8 inch drill bit. Let's see how this works. <laughs> That's your way to just place the kind of drill the threads. So. for this drill press. We're going to make the total length from minus the mounting plate to the seven and three eighths.
Damn, that's ugly. All right, so here's the new bracket on the 04 um, Hydro Boost. Uh, put the other mounting plate off the 98. Uh, put the nut on, the snap ring back on. Here's the piece welded on. Um, you know, I just try to zap it in and just basically spot weld it uh, on and immediately cool it. Uh, it's the correct length with this threaded uh, piece from the original Tahoe booster. And uh, I went to, and there's no reason to take off. I, I mentioned earlier in the video, no reason to take off all four. I just got rolling and just, I just took them all out before I really thought about it. You know, you only need to take out one and that'll give you enough room to get the inch and seven eighths a wrench on this uh, this nut holding the plate on um, and then I went to put these in and back in I thought well I'll just cinch them down with the nuts and I did think about the splined portion which here let me show you one I did think about the splined portion there um, being too long uh, earlier and I just went to zip it on and and uh, the nut hit and um, you know it was the spine portion is thicker than the plate so the nut hit and so basically stripped it because you can see right there how it's got where the spines dig in so I'm just gonna hit this with the MIG uh, just to tack it on so it'll hold so we can uh, bolt this thing up and then I'll drive the rest in with a, a punch and a uh, hammer so I did get the hydro boost put it all back together got it installed um, only problem I had was this fitting here kept leaking uh, I took it apart and found a little sliver of metal was in there and uh, took that out replaced the o-ring uh, seal it's been great ever since the hydro boost has a nice feel if you like the hydro boost feel um, I recently did uh, I was actually testing the hydro boost breaking pretty hard and think I ripped um, <clears throat> on this passenger side, I ripped the brake pad off and it went to metal real quick. So, um, I actually recently replaced my rotors and, uh, pads with, uh, carbon ceramic and, uh, slotted and drilled rotors from, um, from uh, power stop I really wish I'd went ahead and I didn't replace my calipers I just used the ones that I I mean I have replaced the calipers since I've rebuilt the truck but I wish I just went ahead and got the powder coated red uh, calipers because they look nice on the truck but anyway that's where we are with the hydro boost you can apply this I mean we did the same thing we did to his um, 59 Bel Air, he had to uh, modify some pedal mounts and stuff, but he put a hydro boost on this because of uh, engine clearance with the LS. Um, <clears throat> and that is a hydro boost out of a Astro van, I believe. And then he put on a Willwood Master. Um, Still has some buttoning up to do on the firewall, but he's fixing to swap engines and put a LSA supercharger on it. So, um, anyway, that's where we are. All right, catch you guys later.